these other stressors, right? So we've got to protect, protect our, our, ourselves in trying to mitigate or just have better ways of dealing with that stress, if you will. Okay, that's a, that's a big deal. Um, and it all comes down to autonomic nervous system function, which is what I actually specialize in here in the office, is helping people to balance out their autonomic nervous system function. Okay, so it has two parts, your, par your parasympathetic, which is your rest and digest, and your sympathetic, which is fight or flight. Okay, you want to be in parasympathetic, parasympathetic mode as often as possible. Okay, um, that's, what, that's, that's how you win this game, is you are chilled out a lot of the time. Movement. Um, when it comes to trying to navigate and recover from an autoimmune condition, you need to be careful about how much exercise you get. And the tendency is to overdo it, because a lot of us feel like if I exercise, that's my, that's my way of managing stress, I sleep better at night, all those kinds of things, which in the normal person, that's probably true. But if you're dealing with an autoimmune condition, the body reacts to stress the same way, whether it's perceived, fake in your head, emotional stress or whatever, or physical stress, it's going to react the same way. And so, you know, if you're a marathon runner trying to train for a marathon and do the AAP protocol, you're not going to ever get the results you're looking for. It's too much exercise. So what they focus on is while you're on the protocol is, you know, go for a nice walk in the park, you know, maybe a, a treadmill or ride your bike, but you, don't, you shouldn't feel the need to go out there and break a sweat and make yourself super physically tired. Your body needs to be active. You need to have movement because that's going to help your, help your lymphatic system but you shouldn't have to worry about overdoing it. This, what your body is attempting to do in terms of repairing itself is a huge source, a uh, huge consumption of energy. So you, you're not gonna need to like go to the gym three times a week, okay? In fact, if you do, they say track the recovery time. If you go to the gym on Monday and I, on Tuesday and Wednesday, you still feel like you're kind of shaking off the, the workout still, your recovery time gets longer, that's an indication you're doing too much. You gotta back it off, okay? Um, so again, shift your shift your your focus from an exercise focus just to a movement focus. You know, park your car a long way from the front door of the store and walk to the store versus trying to find the closest spot. That kind of stuff. You know, walk to your mailbox versus driving your car by it on the way home. Kind of deal, right? Get some movement, but don't be too concerned with uh, you know legit exercise, if you will. And then relationships. Oxytocin is the key hormone in relationships. Oxytocin. You know, decreases the release of cortisol, decreases cellular inflammation, reduces cravings, uh, fosters generosity, um, and the quality of relationships is more important than, than quantity. So this is where your support system comes in. This is where taking me time comes into play. Um, you know, one of the tools of stress management is that idea of always feeling like you have to be super productive. I mean, our, our society nowadays kind of glorifies the workaholic, you know, burn the candle at both ends kind of mentality. but. In this, in this context, you need to carve out some time for yourself. So, you know, if it's a choice between going to the gym and, and potentially overdoing it, or, you know, turning off the TV, getting a good book, and just enjoying a good book, that's probably the better choice of the two. Things that make you happy, things that you generally enjoy, those are good things you want to make sure you build in time for, uh, because not just they're fun for you, but on a chemical, hormonal level, there's some serious benefit to be had from that. Okay, so make sure you're building, your, building yourself time for that. Okay, so the resources. These are the things you want to write down. Um, the Autoimmune Bistro, I told you about that. That's the workshop we have here every thir or the third Thursday of, every, uh, of the month. We'll try recipes and we'll kind of pick a seg segment of the AI protocol to kind of break down and tease apart more. Autoimmunewellness.com, that's a huge website. Um, loads and loads of information. Most of the protocol information I just showed you came directly from that website. So that's where you want to go to get that. When you go to that website, it's run by two women, Angie and Mickey. They both have autoimmune conditions. In fact, between the two of them, they have five autoimmune conditions that were diagnosed. So they have done this protocol themselves, and this website of theirs is kind of the, the product of their own experience, right? So they're very, very knowledgeable. They're very, very helpful. Um, if you go to their website, I would suggest that you um, sign up for their newsletter, and you're going to get a series of emails, like pre-written pre out emails that everyone gets who signs up, I think like six or seven of them. And one of the first emails you'll get is a, they call it the definitive guide to the AIP protocol, which is basically what I just walked you through. That came from that first email. It's all just the nuts and bolts in one nice spot of how to do this. And then in that nuts and bolts uh, email that you get, there's links to other little side conversations like sleep and stress management and the research behind all this stuff. So you can kind of go down various rabbit holes with that. But that's a really good website to, to check out. The SAD to AIP one we've talked about, that's the one that'll help you navigate this. 
And uh, one of the ladies, I think it's Mickey of the Angie and Mickey team, the, one of the women who started the other website, that's, this is her little project on the side. This helps you get from where you are now to full AIP compliance within six weeks, okay? And I've got a little study here I was gonna share with you. So just recently, um, the AIP protocol was tested in a medical controlled environment uh, and they used the AIP, the SAD to AIP protocol transition, and I'll read you those study re results here, pretty impressive. And then realplans.com. So realplans.com, you'll see advertised on autoimmunewellness.com. That's a phenomenal website because realplans.com, what it is, is it, it's, a, it's a website that will help you navigate different diets and lifestyles. So whether it's paleo or keto or AIP or some other type of diet, you tell them which diet you're trying to follow, and then inside of that diet, they know exactly which foods you should have, which foods you should avoid, right? And you also tell them, okay, I'm, I'm trying to follow this protocol. And by the way, I don't like Brussels sprouts. So whatever recipes you have that, that, that are good for AIP, leave out the Brussels sprouts. Show me everything that doesn't have that in it, right? That's the saddaip.com. No, that's the realplans.com. Sad to AIP is going from where, how you're eating now to uh, full compliance with the protocol. Once you're on the protocol though, you don't want to have the same meal every day of the week. You have to vary it up. So real plans will help you vary that up. Now, here's the challenge with, with following the protocol is meal planning, menu planning, and shopping. That's going to be the bulk of your time that you're going to have to figure out initially. So realplans.com for a small fee, and I have no affiliation with them, so I'm not selling them. I don't get anything back from them. I think it's like 20 bucks a month, maybe even a little less. It's 12 or 15. 12 or 15, even better, right? But it's an app. I have a patient that has the app. And it'll show you your weekly meals, uh, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and it will give you the actual shopping list to get all that, all the ingredients for it, right? And the shopping list will will be compliant with the protocol. Plus, it won't include stuff you don't like. They do all that background work for you, so it's super helpful. If you have any questions, they have a really good customer support uh, little protocol. So if you have any or, or like portal, right? So if you have any questions, oh, is this safe or how do I find this? Or and they have the they have the. Um, uh, inventory right of all the major grocery stores like Safeways and Trader Joe's and they can tell you where to go find this or where to go find that because they know they know where to find it yeah they, they do also remind you like to take the things out of the fridge freezer to defrost yeah the following I mean oh, yeah, it's really cool. that's what I'm saying like that's the hardest the hardest part Oops. back over here Ken back over here yeah it's all right you can come on um yeah the hardest part about the protocol is all that prep work. You're like, oh, shoot, it's like studying for the SAT exam again or some big exam. You know, you've got your, you've got your, your binder of things you have to, you know, your meals and your ingredients and it's a lot of work, right? So th that's money well invested in my opinion to make this so much easier, okay? And I think that's it. So